Two weeks ago, I gave you my tight end tiers. About a month ago, Nikki Clicky gave you his wide receivers and running back tiers, but no love to the QBs have been given yet. The most important position on the field. Don't worry, it's Wednesday. Jamel's got addition three with you guys to keep his job. I'm going to give the quarterbacks some love. My top 32 quarterbacks. The tiers we are going over are the tippity tippity top, the lucky Lucy's. Yes, yes, probably locked and loaded. The Misfit Toys, Heeny Meeny Miny Mo, The Sandlot, and Stay Strong. Like Flex Your Trap Strong. Well, before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, leave a like, leave a sub, stick with us, gut, throw some Gordon Ramsay highlights, and let's get cooking. <laughs> Tier number one, the tippity tippity top. My tiers are left to right. So yes, Josh Allen is my QB one. He's averaged the most fantasy points over the past three years. So that's why he's my guy. All of these guys are on the same level and should be left up to your preference. If you listen to any other fantasy creator, radio host, article, tweet, whatever, that acts like one of these guys are above and beyond the other, run away because they are just being biased. Every single one of these guys in the tippity top tier are within the same range. They can have preferences just like I do with Allen, but they're all within the same region. One way to decipher though, which guy you want to maybe go with is definitely always take the QB you could stack with. For example, if you take Stefan Diggs in round one, and then in late round two, you can either get Josh Allen or Mahomes, the easy pick is Allen. Another example, if you get AJ Brown in round one, and then say round two, round three, you could take Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen, the easy pick is Jalen Hurts. Always take the correlated stack. It'll help you out in the long run. But you guys know fantasy football, you don't need a deep dive about all three of these guys, so let's keep moving. Tier number two, the Lucky Lucy's. This is my favorite tier to talk about. Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields, Justin Herbert. They're called the Lucky Lucy's because in some way or another, every single one of these guys had bad luck last year. Lamar Jackson got hurt. Justin Fields was on the Chicago Bears. And Justin Herbert's on the Chargers who always had bad luck. The O-line was hurt. He got his ribs hurt. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams only played four games together. Yada, yada, yada. But this year, if any of these guys can find a pot of gold, throw a penny in a fountain, eat their lucky charms, find a four-leaf clover, find and keep a leprechaun, whatever it is, if they could get lucky and things break their way, the sky is the limit. Lamar's healthy, got new weapons, a new bag, new contract, and a new OC. Lamar MVP might be back in the building. Justin Fields, we saw his rushing upside last year. This year, the Bears invested in him in the passing game. They, they drafted Darnell Wright. They traded for DJ Moore. They got him weapons. They got him protection. Now let's see him cook both through the air and on the ground. I'm in on Justin Herbert being the passing leader this year. Wide receiver room is healthy with a brand new wide receiver and first round pick Quentin Johnston and a brand new OC in Kellen Moore. I think he's going to be slinging it. He's thrown for 5K before. I think he could do it again. Next tier, yes, yes, and probably. Right now, Joe Burrow is a QB6. I have him at QB7, but I'm still in on Burrow. I think Jamar Chase could lead the league in receiving touchdowns, and they added to the O-line when they sign Orlando Brown Jr. for the Chiefs. I'm in on Burrow. I'm just that in on Justin Herbert to have him jump him. Trevor Lawrence, amongst these first three tiers, might be the best value. Right now, he's a QB8. Last year, he was the QB7 while only throwing 25 passing touchdowns. He's now entering his third year of the league, his second year in the same offense, and oh yeah, they added Calvin Ridley. Herbert threw 25 passing touchdowns last year. I think this year he can play with that 35 and there is a reality which, where he pushes a 40 touchdown season. I'm not going to go that far, but I do think he could play with the mid 30s and getting that QB8 below everyone else when he has the same upside as everyone else. Might want to take a swing on the young kid in Jacksonville. And finally in this tier, Mr. Probably. I've officially bumped up Deshaun Watson to the same tier as Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. Bold, I know, but it's needed. He's going as a QB9. The last three times Deshaun Watson played a full season, he was a QB4, QB5, and QB5. It's not like he had some serious injury or has hit a very old age and he's just never going to be the same. Deshaun Watson's still in his prime, still healthy. He's just waiting to get the rust off. He's looked good in the little bit of preseason we've seen. He's had good training camp news, and this is the best team and roster he's ever been around. There's a chance Deshaun Watson is going to be a top five quarterback in fantasy next year. This is the last year you might be able to get him outside of the top five at QB9. Tier number four, locked and loaded. I mean, everyone in this tier is here for a reason because their weapons are effing stacked. Two has got Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, Kirk Scott, TJ Hawkinson, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison. Geno Smith, 
might have a top three wide receiver trio. DK Metcalf, JSN, Tyler Lockett. And then in Dallas, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup. They might not be as such a superpower trio as the other three. And I think Dak Prescott is a good and slightly, slightly underrated quarterback. This isn't a quarterback tiers video, quarterback rankings video on just how good QBs are. This is fantasy only, but I will say this might be getting a little too much hate. He's got good weapons around him. Everyone in here either has been on pace to or has finished as a top 10 quarterback back in fantasy before they could stay upright their weapons could stay upright right now they're sitting in that 10 to 13 range with top 10 upside i like them down here locked and loaded these are all phenomenal qb2s or good fringe qb1s the misfit toys here's where we start to get a little ugly you know we've had the good wasn't a whole lot of bad this is just it's not pretty this misfit toys here that's their name for a reason things to like about them but there might not be the most well put together aaron Rodgers has some pros past five years he's never finished outside of quarterback 15 right now you could get him at qb 16 the math adds up there already got garrett wilson the offensive rookie of the year and all his guys from green bay that he won and lazard randall cop he's gonna be 40 soon new team new adjustment rough o line it's not all sunshine and rainbows but could be a little bit of sunlight just depends what type of clouds and how many clowns showed up in New York. Reasons to like them and love them. A Rich, Anthony Richardson. I love Anthony Richardson. I go to the University of Florida. I have sat in class with him. He's awesome. But this should be showing you I'm always going to be unbiased. I love him. I don't want him on my fantasy team, at least at where he's going at QB 11. I bumped him down to QB 15. I like him at QB 15 or anywhere in the late teens. QB 11, not so much. In the history of the NFL, for the past three years, to be QB 11 or better, you need about 200 195 fantasy points in the history of the NFL. Three rookie quarterbacks have done that ever, ever. History, NFL, ever, ever, ever. Three times it has happened. Statistically, AR is just straight up not favored here. Dude's an athlete. I love him. QB 15 all over him. But if he was a tier above, he's overpriced. Daniel Jones, Jared Goff, both these guys, simply put, I think are in a good situation for themselves. But last year, I think they both overperformed. Daniel Jones put up over 700 rushing yards and seven rushing TDs. Don't see him doing that back to back. However, he could make up for it in the passing game where he only had 15 passing TDs and now has Darren Waller. Jared Goff, probably the most efficient he's ever been this year. And it's hard to just rely on the logic of, oh, he was so great. He can't do it again. It's not sound logic in total, but this is still a run first offense. And this team still doesn't really have a second great option. Now in the back half of the year, Goff could be solid. Jamison Williams will be off suspension. Sam Laporta could maybe find himself in the back half as a rookie. And Amon Ra is still going to be Amon Ra. But early on, there could be some kinks in the passing game because Amon Ra is all, all they really got. Next tier is the Eeny Meeny Miny Mo tier. I almost called them the Misfit Toys 2.0 because that's kind of what they are. Similar thing. It's a batch of guys that got a little bit to like and a little bit to not like, but knockoff versions of the tier above. But I like Eeny Meeny Miny Mo. And I changed the name because I think... This tier, while it's left to right for me, can be based on risk tolerance for you. How risky or safe do you want to get? This may shock you. I think Russell Wilson is a lot safer of a pick than many people think. Right now, Russell Wilson is being drafted as a QB 18, and I think me and you would both agree, last year, Russell Wilson was not good. He was dog shit. He was dog water. He was bad at playing football. He still finished as a QB 14. In his worst year ever, he still finished better than where he's being drafted right now. Any type, any type of bounce back at all. And Russell Wilson is going to be a good value. But I simply can't move him up in tears just because the whole he's due logic or he's going to bounce back or just hoping he will do better is not the same thing as knowing he will be better. There's no guarantee. So therefore, I can't skyrocket him with the tears. But where he he currently is at QB 18. Not a lot of downside, to be honest. His bottom floor price is pretty much how much he costs. Derek Carr, I think, is one of the best and safest QB twos to get in fantasy football. You know, if you early on you take a Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, a little risky play, but you want a safe QB two to count on week in and week out for at least something, Derek Carr's your guy. He's going as a QB 19. He's never had a finish outside of QB 20. He's never had a finish better than QB 11. It's always going to be safe, consistent in that team's range for you to at least to have some backfall week in and week out. Matthew Stafford is risky. This is where the risk starts to take an uptick. I don't have a strong opinion on Stafford as far as me telling you you have to target him. Obviously, if we're in like the fifth or sixth tier, whatever we're at, 
none of these guys are heavy targets you have to get. But I will say this, if you're in on Cooper Cup, you need to be in on Stafford. It's as simple as that. Their success should go hand in hand. Cooper Cup was going as a wide receiver three before his hamstring injury. And I know there's a little bit extra risk now, but he's still going as a wide receiver four. People are still in on Cooper Cup. Why aren't they still in on Matthew Stafford? If you're out on Cup, get out on Stafford. But these two guys should be connected and it feels like Cup's still being drafted toward his ceiling while Stafford's being drafted at his floor. And then Jordan Love, I mean, new kid on the block, young weapons around him. Everyone at the BDG office is in love with the Packers. Matt specifically, Matt, shout out to you. You were first to be in on the Packers at the office. I think I was second and it came along. Gut, Tony, I think they're with us. I don't know when, why, or where they came from. But BDGE believes in the Packers to be a sneaky team in offense this season. And with that, Come to little Jordan Love's sprinkle of love. So to get him at like QB 21 right now, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You want to take some big risk on a new kid that has about, what, two games under his belt? Something like that. Here's your rock to rock with. In the next tier, the Sandlot. In video one, I was trying to, you know, come up with these rhymes. I think my better thing is to come up with cool analogies. So let's, let's, I'll try and stick with that better because the rhyming, maybe my rap career isn't going to take off like I thought. The Sandlot tier is called this because of the movie Sandlot. Hopefully you have seen that. In the movie The Sandlot, the baseball movie with the dog, Smalls is standing in the outfield and a ball is hit up in the air to the outfield. Smalls doesn't move. Smalls doesn't chase the ball down. He doesn't track the ball. He stands still, closes his eyes, puts his hand up in the air, and hopes for the best. And it worked out. But that's what you're doing with any of these quarterbacks. You're putting your hand up in the air, pressing the draft button, hoping for a one in a million chance these guys have a top 10 finish. Very unlikely. You could talk yourselves into any of them. You know, Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell, Brock Purdy, they're all entering year two. They're all in good situations with good weapons. George Pick and Deontay Johnson. Debo Samuel, George Kittle, CMC, Chan McLaurin, Jahan Dotson. You can convince yourself this. And if you have the room and depth for a QB3 to take a shot on, go for it. But just don't be relying on these guys to be your starter, please. Brock Purdy, there is, you know, he's in the best situation. He's got the best weapons and he probably has a starting job, but that's the issue. Probably. I want, he's got it. And it's looking that way, but still any slight, even 1% that he's not the starter, that's risk. Risk is risk. Tannehill, he's in here because overall he's been an average fantasy quarterback. You know, he's usually been top 20 at least but 2019 2020 days of looking like that guy they're gone plus Traylon Burks got a little banged up I don't think D Hop is going to be as good as PKJ Brown was Kyler Murray if you want to take a risk and hope he plays the last three weeks of the season to give you some explosiveness and maybe the fantasy football championship take a flyer on him but please do not factor that into actually relying on him being good final tier stay strong we need to be stronger than Nick is when he flexes his traps to stay away from the guys in this tier i did say throughout the video and in the beginning this is a left to right tier so bryce young he does have the most hope in here and you could argue he's in the sandlot tier i could live with that but he's still down here because for him to be like extremely relevant he's got to put on a rookie of the year campaign and performance and just with all the debate of who the wide receiver one in that room is even if you have a strong opinion dj Chark, jonathan mingo adam thielen none of those guys are like aces okay so many things would have to go in bryce's way so many for him to win rookie of the year or be super fantasy relevant that i think he's in the stay strong tier where you can't talk yourself into them that's why it's called stay strong stay strong and don't dive into your emotions be logical do not start convincing yourself oh baby Baker Mayfield has Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. He could be good. Oh, Desmond Ritter has got Kyle Pitts, Bijan out of the backfield, Drake London. He could be good. No, enough. That's a, like me even saying this is convincing myself. Maybe, maybe I got them too low. No, Jamison, you said going into this video, you said making these tiers to stay strong. I'm doing my best to. You need to, to fade these guys. Mac Jones doesn't have shit for weapons. He's not that great in general. CJ Stroud, the little bit we saw in preseason, wasn't exactly sunshine and rainbows. And Jimmy G, again, don't be going, well, he's with Josh McDaniels. He's familiar with him. He's got Devontae Adams, the best wide receiver in the NFL, arguably. Jacoby Myers ain't bad. Hunter Renfro. They drafted the rookie tight end. No, enough. No rambling, no convincing, no attachment. These guys deserve no love. Stay strong. Ladies and gentlemen, that are your eight tiers, 32 straight QBs. Some I went more depth in depth on, some I didn't go in depth on, but I think you got a good grip of all of them. Thank you for sticking with me for audition three of JMO on the YouTube channel. It is because of you guys and your amazing positive feedback that I keep coming 
back. Week four, will you see me? Will you not? It's up to you if I keep my job when Nikki Clicky. I need one of three things. One of three, you choose, you know the drill, not all three required. Number one, go to bdge.shop and check out some merch. You can get a hat, a white shirt, purple shirt. I think by the time this video drops, we might have blue shirts. Could be. And if we don't by then, get your gears going because that means blue shirts are coming eventually. Option number two, go to bdge.shop and get yourself a draft guide. This is for $25 for everything. He gives preseason updates, rankings, everything you need to know, or option B to option two, you could go to underdogfantasy.com and deposit $10 or more using code BDGE, and you could get the draft guide for free. That option's a lot cheaper, and if you use that code, your $10 will get double to play with, so now you have 20. So it's a win-win for option B. I think that's better than option A and option two, but option three is free, I know. It's not all about the money, but since option three is free, I need two things a like, and a comment. If you want to do all three of those, why aren't you working here? Why aren't you taking my job? Why aren't you auditioning? Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, as always, and of course, thank you and good night.